Hey, my name is Cameron. I'm Vice President Software and Brain Drone Team Lead here at Neural Bird Tech. Hi, my name is Zach. I'm the previous VP Tech of Neural Bird Tech. Hi, my name is Landon Fear. I'm the VP Communications at Neural Bird Tech. Hi, I'm Matt Daniluk, Vice President Internal at Neural Bird Tech. So, what exactly is the Brain Drone? Well, it is quite literally a drone controlled by your brain. Uh, you can go forward, you can go back, you can go up, down, left, right. Uh, you can do all of the normal drone commands, except you don't actually need a controller to do it. All of it is controlled via your brainwaves using an EEG headset. EEG stands for electroencephalogram, which is a method of non-invasively measuring your brain's activity by placing electrodes on your head. This right here is an EEG headset. It is one made by OpenBCI, it's a 16 channel headset, which means that there is 16 electrodes placed at various places around my head that measure my brain's activity. This specific headset has a sample rate of 250 hertz, which means that it sends my brain's data to a computer via this 250 times a second. We can then use a computer to pre-process this data to figure out what exactly is going on inside my head, and then use this information to make classifications to control, for example, a drone. When we first started this project, it very naturally broke itself into four different pieces. Those pieces are the research, connecting the BCI to the computer, connecting the drone to the computer, and then connecting the BCI to the drone via the computer. The research team was tasked with finding a set of cues, or things that we could think of, that we could use to control the drone. These cues needed to be easily differentiable, so that a BCI like the Open BCI could easily pick up on the subtle differences, and we could pass that information into a machine learning algorithm to confidently classify our different cues. We also needed these cues to be logical. We needed them to fit in the same category of things, be it muscle movements, colors, words, what have you, so that the user experience was more fluid and there wasn't such a steep learning curve to be able to pick up and fly this drone. And finally, we needed the brain to be able to switch between these cues as fast as possible. We wanted the brain to be able to switch states in a reasonable amount of time so that controlling the drone wasn't impossible and so that you weren't flying it into walls all the time. Now the second natural step was to connect the OpenBCI to the computer. This was a relatively easy step because the OpenBCI as a research grade headset was built to connect to computers, specifically through Python, C++, etc. libraries. The third part was connecting the computer to the drone. This part was relatively straightforward as well, but we did run into quite a few challenges because the drone wasn't as well supported as the headset. Obviously it was still well supported, but we struggled a little bit more, and we really struggled trying to come up with a controller that would work well with the BCI. We could program a controller that worked perfectly with Python, and you could program it and get it to do exactly what you want within a script, but it was challenging to try and write a real-time controller that was smart enough to be able to be compatible with the BCI in the first place. And the last part was just tying everything together, just making it a cohesive application that you can use on your computer so that you can just fly the drone with your brain. Theoretically, this would have been the easiest part, and practically speaking with the code, it was, but it ended up being the place where a lot of our smaller bugs that were kind of hidden away in previous iterations of our code really started to show themselves. And this is where a lot of time was spent on development, just perfecting it and getting it to work so what exactly does it look like to fly the brain drone? Well, right from the very start, we designed the software so that it was as minimal as possible, so that it was just you, the headset, and the drone, and the software stayed as out of the way as it could. So before we go about trying to fly the drone, we need to go through a couple preliminary steps to get everything set up. So first we need to connect the OpenBCI to the computer and run a handful of diagnostics tests to make sure that we don't have any rail channels and to make sure that we're getting some data that we actually expect to be getting. Next, we either collect some data or load some pre-saved data from a previous session so that we can then move on to pre-processing and building and training the models for the data. Once we've done all this preliminary work, the drone is ready to fly, so the program goes straight into fly mode, where you're presented with a flight dashboard which just kind of tells you the most important stuff that you need to know when you're flying the drone. Stuff like the drone's battery level, the prediction that each of the individual classifiers is making, and the overall prediction or the command that's being sent to the drone, just so you can be sure that the drone is doing what you're telling it to do. To be able to actually control the drone with your brain, we fed the EEG data into three different classifiers. Each of these classifiers has its own strengths and weaknesses, so we use them together in a sort of democracy. If at least two of the three identify the same action, like go forward, then we send that to the drone and it will go forward. But if they can't agree on an action, then we'll just let the drone hover there. 
These classifiers range from simple to complex. So the first one is just all 16 channels of raw data fed into it. The next one is the average across all the channels. And the last one is the Fourier transform data. Using these three classifiers together allows us to much more accurately predict what you want the drone to do than if we were to use any one of them individually. So you may ask, why did we make the Brain Drone? Well, by making the Brain Drone, we wanted to create a proof of concept that accomplished two things. Firstly, we wanted to show an example of a real-time application for classifying brain states using EEG and machine learning that was accurate enough to perform a sufficiently complex task. And secondly, we wanted a project that was fun, not purely academic, so that we could appeal to a wider audience and get more people interested in neurotechnology, which is one of the core goals that we hope to accomplish with Neural Brain Tech. With this proof of concept, we showed the feasibility of an entire class of problems within the same domain as Brain Drone, which is problems that make use of the directional brain states that Brain Drone uses, so up, down, forward, back, rotate left, rotate right. These applications can range quite drastically from things that are more fun and light, such as games that are played using your brainwaves as input, to more serious and important applications, such as allowing a wheelchair to be controlled by your brain so that those who don't have the motor control to do so physically can still control them. Now that we've completed a working prototype for the Brain Drone, there are several ways in which it can be improved upon for future work, either by us or by anyone else because all of our code is open sourced. For example, because we started this project with extensibility in mind, the codebase can be easily modified to work with many other applications as what we created was a backend that's a general purpose classifier for directional brain states, which allows new front ends to be created to work with the backend for applications to work with those brain states. Beyond that, the backend can be extended with a little bit of effort and training data to classify more states, making the backend more expressive. Also, more training data could always be collected to improve the model's accuracy and allow for better transfer learning so that it can be adapted to each user more quickly and easily with a higher accuracy in the end. We actually ended up facing quite a few big and small challenges while completing this project. Likely the biggest problem that we ended up having to face was the logistics. At the beginning of this year, when we were first getting into this project, the logistics really weren't that much of a concern. We showed up to the place on campus where we usually meet, we brought the hardware, we got to work on it, and everything more or less went okay. When classes first started moving online as a result of the pandemic, we really kind of stopped working on this project to prioritize some more pressing issues. Once we were able to get back into the project, we had a lot of troubles actually being able to get some work done on the hardware and actually get some programming done because not everyone had access to the hardware. To be safe, we couldn't meet up and actually work on the hardware like we usually would. So for quite a while, the project stagnated and we weren't able to get very much done. It is incredibly hard to work on a hardware project when you don't have access to the hardware and you can't actually touch it or connect to it or anything. We also ended up facing a lot of challenges with getting the two libraries to actually work together. So we were able to connect the OpenBCI to the computer just fine and train it and collect data and predict our data with relative ease. We were also able to connect the computer to the drone so that we could send and receive data fairly easily. The biggest problem came when we were trying to get both of these libraries to work together in the same file. Unfortunately, the two libraries end up communicating with Python in slightly different ways and expect you to run your program in slightly different ways, and it was quite challenging to find a way to structure our code so that the drone library was happy with the layout and the OpenBCI library was happy with the layout, and they worked together to send data between different threads. All in all, I'm super proud of how the Brain Drone ended up turning out, despite all of the challenges we faced throughout the year, and I'm really excited to see how ourselves and others will be able to grow this project in the future. <laughs>